Hey everyone, it's Joelle here and I am coming to you now with my June 2019 reading wrap up. So um, yeah, June was an interesting month for me. Um, it's It was Women's World Cup month. It's still Women's World Cup and uh, the USA is kicking butt. We made it to the final. But because I've been watching so much football, it's been just... I haven't had time to read as much. So as a result, um, I only did one, two, three, four, five books and they're all audiobooks. Um, I did have some physical books that I started, but I'll go into that in a little bit. So yeah, here we go. I got my Buffy shirt on. I did that for Bobby. Um, I'm going to link some people down in the description box that I've just been loving lately, um, uh, new friends and just people I've just been enjoying watching their videos, but yeah, so let's get into it. The first book that I completed, um, I had briefly mentioned in the last month's wrap up, um, and I technically finished it in June. So that was the lost man by Jane Harper. I hated that book. Um, it wasn't, it was my own fault because I thought it was going to be a thriller and it just wasn't. It was more of a contemporary, uh, just with like thriller-esque elements to it. Basically, um, it takes place in the Australian outback on some like wide, vast area of land and it follows a family and uh, some adult males that are Australian and um, one of the brothers dies and it's kind of like trying to figure out, did he kill himself? Did someone kill him? And then like the aftermath of it um, and just the history of their family and the abuse that happened and everything. It just wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. So I only gave it a three star. But um, after that, I was on uh, Scribd and Libby and just trying to find another audiobook that was like a thriller. And I kept coming across this one on Libby and I was like, whatever, I'll just listen to it. And that was Ink and Bone by Lisa Unger. Now, when I just went back on Goodreads to check my recap and my star rating, um, I did see that it was number five in a series of book. I don't know if that's actually correct though, but um, I didn't really need to listen to anything else or read anything else because it made sense to me. Um, but basically it, I gave it a four star. Um, and this follows a character named Finley, and Finley is kind of like this badass uh, chick covered in tattoos who rides a motorcycle. It's like super stereotypical too. I'm like, eh. Um, but anyway, she has some um, psychic abilities a little bit. Um, she's able to tap into uh, seeing some ghosts, and then that uh, leads her to help work with a detective on a local mystery of some missing young girls. Um, her grandma also possesses the uh, ability to to kind of tap into that realm as well. Um, her tattoos are kind of like, it's so fucking cheesy. Um, so basically she gets tattoos of all of the ghosts and the characters and stuff that she sees. And of course the tattoo artist is her ex-boyfriend and there's all this like sexual tension and tattoos and everything. Um, yeah, I just, I want less cheesiness, more thriller-esque elements, but I will say because it follows a couple different perspectives, yeah, we get the perspective of Finley, but then we also get the perspective of the girl that's captured and kidnapped and kind of like the weird situation in like this, I don't want to say like rednecky, but this like backwoods, like less educated kind of uh, like weird people in the tree area like in the, the woods and all of that um I liked that stuff less of the like boring like stereotypical crap and more of the like weird creepy stuff um but overall I mean it was decent it it fulfilled my need for something to be in that kind of category um but overall I just gave it a four star and that was on my Libby app from the library the next one I only listened to this because Cody from Cody's book corner um had read it or listened to it and I was like all right cool Margaret Atwood you know she did the uh, Handmaid's Tale and she has a lot of weird post-apocalyptic creepy shit and Cody didn't really go into super detail about what this book was about but enough to where it intrigued me um it was really weird um I have to say that like the first three quarters of it I was so lost because it flips between the past and the future and Essentially what it does is it follows this character named Snowman, but his real name is Jimmy. 
And it goes back and forth between Jimmy as a kid and growing up living in essentially like a neighborhood and an atmosphere of scientists. And they basically do a lot of genetic testing and a lot of um, developing of merging different species of animals together. Like there's something called a pigoon, which is like a pig and a baboon, um, just to try and like add more resources um, more food and more just like using these animals to help organ redevelopment because something happened that caused the world to get really fucked up and we now need all this genetic weird stuff so and then Jimmy it goes through him through the years and he meets this guy and um, I can't even remember what his real name is but he goes by Craig eventually and that kid is also super smart and he's in that whole realm and they build this bond and everything um, and then eventually they it, there's a lot of sex like in Margaret Atwood's books she talks about how like there's a lot of like perversion and um, like weird, disgusting things. And a lot of society's downfall is science and like sexual corruption. And when I say that, I mean like a lot of pornography, a lot of child pornography. So trigger warnings for that. It's a little disturbing in a lot of parts. Um, just talking about some of the stuff that they make these kids do. Um, it's not like super graphic, but there's hints towards it. So if that bothers you, then you probably want to stay away from this. But Oryx essentially is one of these little girls who ends up growing in that kind of um, child pornography lifestyle. And then she somehow eventually along the lines ends up with them. Um, but essentially, uh, fast forward to the future and I don't want to give away too much because uh, it would give away the whole freaking thing but a lot of the book perspectives is snowman and he's really the only human left on the planet and it's very like destroyed almost like a nuclear virus type of thing there was like a virus type element and he's like the only like human left and he's like navigating this world and trying to protect these uh, manufactured creatures that were manufactured in a lab. Um, and it's just really weird. There's not a lot of humans left. It's really confusing and it's really weird. But the sad thing is like, I really liked the ending and I really liked where it was going when you finally figure out what happens. So it almost has me intrigued to want to pick up the next one, but I think I need to take a break from it. Um, just because it was a little bit much, but so that was Orcs and Crake and I gave that a three star. Um, I think I would have given it a higher star had it, um, had I just understood it a little bit more. Like, I think if I were to go back in like a year and reread it, I probably would have rated it higher. Um, but yeah, now, the next one that I, now, okay, sidetracked. Everything I did was audiobooks. So this is all audio because that's what I prefer. Um, but the next one, Daisy Jones and the Six. Every single person I feel like has talked about this book. And there's a good reason why. Um, I knew that everybody raved about the audiobook because it's a full cast audiobook and I loved Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and just everybody was freaking raving about this. When I heard the voice of Daisy Jones was voiced by Jennifer Beals, I lost my shit. If you guys don't know who Jennifer Beals is, she plays Bet on The L Word, which is like the classic lesbian TV drama. Um, if you've never watched The L Word, get you on Netflix, start watching The L Word because they're rebooting it. It takes place about 10-ish years ago during the Bush era and um, how things were super not accepted as they are now. And that's what I grew up watching, not grew up, but that was like my college lesbian gay uh, TV show. So that's what I kind of became an adult into the LGBTQ community. That was me, that was my reference, was those characters. So she also, Jennifer Beals, if you've never seen uh, Flashdance, is the main character of Flashdance. You know that epic scene where she leans back on the chair and the water comes on her. And there's so many like references to that. That's Jennifer Beals. She's been around since the 80s. But anyway, that alone was like, oh hell yeah, I'm gonna love this. Um, Daisy Jones and the Six essentially follows a band in the 70s. Um, 
it's six artists together and it's a rock band in the 70s, primarily men. There's one other woman. And then they decide that they're gonna bring in this other singer, Daisy Jones, to add to the band to help uh, with one song. And then it turns into a whole, she joins the band and then they go on tour, they record an album and all of that. It's kind of the drama between the two, Daisy Jones and the main singer. And they're like, I don't want to give away too much, but like the drama between them butting heads, but they're also so good and so compatible together when it comes to songwriting and performing. Um, you also follow like the side characters and the stuff that they're going through. And then also um, just everything that's going on in the 70s with like sex, drug, rock and roll. Um, I loved it though. I absolutely loved it. I want to listen to this album. And I think every single person that has talked about this wants an album and I don't know I feel like there needs to be like I almost feel like Florence and the Machine can do a Daisy Jones and the Six album I want that to happen Florence Florence and the Machine record the album get you a male singer and just do it because I would freaking love it I gave that a five star no question about it the last book that I listened to and actually completed in the month of June was Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. And I don't know why I didn't listen to this earlier. I gave this a five star. Now, it's an exorcism kind of book. And I don't like exorcisms typically. Um, I have no interest in that. Um, possession. I'm not really into possession. I'm not into haunted houses and stuff. Let me tell you, Paul Tremblay puts together a really good story. Um... And a lot of this I blame, um, that's what she read, aka, uh, crap, why am I forgetting her name? Stephanie, Stephanie, who runs the Books in the Freezer podcast. I blame her for me listening to this book. Um, it's so freaking good. It basically follows um, a girl named Mary, and she is going back and doing interviews and stuff about when she was a little girl, how her older sister Marjorie went through an exorcism and how it was a reality TV show. So um, it's like recapping like what the truth was uh, actually happened. And was it really an exorcism? Was she really possessed by a demon or was she schizophrenic? So she's kind of like going back and they're writing a book about like the truth behind the story. But the best part about this is every now and then you get this like blogger perspective, which um, is called the last final girl. And it's like, um, it's like if somebody were to write a blog about like horror movies and stuff and like their opinions about stuff that happened. And that part cracked me up because I felt like this would be a blog that I would actually read. Um, but you go back and forth between Mary telling the story and then the actual true events that happened in the story uh, of Marjorie and her exorcism and everything. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Something about it just, it was just so good. And I was very fulfilled, very happy. And it really, really made me want to pick up more Paul Tremblay. Um, I have to say I wasn't the biggest fan of the cabin at the end of the world it was super confusing and I was left with like a huh but his writing style is so good and again this was audiobook so it could be the fact that the narrator who did the audio was so good um whereas I didn't really care for the one who did the cabin at the end of the world probably because it was a dude I don't really do well with male uh, narrators that do audiobooks. Something about that. It's the same thing with me and like male singers. I don't really like music sung by men. I don't know why. I don't know. But anyway, so that kind of is everything that I finished 100% in the month of June. Everything else I started but have not finished. So for example, I'm still <laughs> still reading Vengeful. I feel like that book is just dragging on. Um, I've gotten a little bit farther though. I just pick it up every now and then and go through a couple of chapters and it's getting better. But I feel like if I just had time to just sit there with no distractions because it just seems like there's other things I'd rather be doing than reading Vengeful and that's really sad because it's not that bad of a book. Um, so I'm still in the middle of that. I started reading The Mermaid by Christina Henry um, like a day ago because I'm buddy reading that with Cody from Cody's Book Corner and um, yeah it's really interesting. It's kind of a Little Mermaid meets P.T. Barnum and like 
history, historical fiction-ish, but hopefully with some gore because the whole reason I like Christina Trembley is because her stuff is really freaking Christina Trembley, Christina Henry, because her stuff is really twisted retellings. And I loved Lost Boy and I loved Alice. Um, and she has another one out now called The Girl in Red girl in red which is little red riding hood ish cody read it and her description of it i was like what so i kind of really intrigued to read that one and you know it's christine henry um the other one i'm reading is like it's some other weird one um i don't know i think i might dnf it because it's boring it's supposed to be a thriller but i don't even remember what it is it's on my goodreads you guys can look at my goodreads um and then the last one i don't know why it's taking me so long to get through this, but uh, the very last, I actually have a physical book, Record of a Space Born Few by Becky Chambers. I love the first one. I love the second one. This third one though is like dragging on and I can't get into it. Too many character perspectives. I think that's the problem. There's so many things going on with it that it's just like, I just can't. So I'm doing that too. So I got a lot going on all at once. Um, it's July now. I'm very fortunate today, day one of a six day off stretch. It's Anna's birthday today, my wife, and I'm super excited. We got 4th of July coming up, her birthday party coming up, all kinds of crazy stuff. So July hopefully will be a very productive month. It's Cody's book birthday, uh, Cody, <laughs> Cody's book corner's birthday. I'm getting ready to mail out her package. I'm super stoked about that. She's going to love it. Hopefully. Um, but yeah, let me know if you've read or listened to any of these books. Let me know your recommendations based on things that I typically like to read because I would love to see what you guys like. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. All my social media links are down in the description box. Anybody I mentioned in this video will also be down in the description box too. I've got some tags coming up. I've got all kinds of things coming up. I haven't really hauled anything because I'm poor and I am trying to spend my money on paying off my debt. So yeah, there's that. Um, but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, look forward to your comments. I'll see y'all in the next one. Okay, bye.